Hi everyone. I wanted to spend a little bit of time with you in Mark chapter 2 today, uh, right beginning at verse 1, uh, where Jesus heals a paralyzed man. I'm sure you're familiar with this passage. Uh, we read, a few days later when Jesus again entered Capernaum, the people heard that he'd come home. They gathered in such large numbers that there was no room left, not even outside the door, and he preached the word to them. Some men came, bringing to him a paralyzed man carried by four of them. Since they could not get him to Jesus because of the crowd, they made an opening in the roof above Jesus by digging through it and then lowered the mat the man was lying on. When Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralyzed man, Son, your sins are forgiven. Now some teachers of the law were sitting there thinking to themselves, Why does this fellow talk like that? He's blaspheming. Who can forgive sins but God alone? Immediately Jesus knew in his spirit that this was what they were thinking in their hearts. And he said to them, Why are you thinking these things? Which is easier, to say to this paralyzed man, Your sins are forgiven? or to say, get up, take your mat, and walk. But I want you to know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. So he said to the man, I tell you, get up, take your mat, and go home. He got up, took his mat, and walked out in full view of them all. This amazed everyone, and they praised God, saying, we've never seen anything like this. You know, this is a true story of a paralyzed man who was fortunate enough to have four special friends come alongside of him. Do you know what made them so special? They were loving and compassionate. They were people of great faith, but they acted on their faith and they carried their paralyzed friend to the house where Jesus was speaking. And you know, when you and I act on our faith and bring others to Christ, he ministers to them and great and wonderful things happen. And that can absolutely occur during this COVID-19 virus. Yes, we are staying in place at home. Yes, we don't get out much at all, but that doesn't mean that we can't carry others to Christ and lend our faith. Mark mentions a stretcher here, a mat that was turned into a stretcher. And the, the reason the man was on the stretcher was because of physical illness, he was paralyzed. He wasn't able to walk, and so the friends come, and they each grab a corner, and they take him over to the house where Jesus was speaking. You know, the stretcher waits for all of us as we go through life from time to time. There are times when we just need others to come alongside us and encourage us and care for us. Sometimes it's a specific event. Maybe there's a loss. Uh, sometimes it's a cluster of events, and any one of those by themselves maybe wouldn't have been that difficult, but when they stack up all of a sudden, uh, we don't have the time to just get our bearings before the next wave strikes. And so there are, there are times when life puts us on a stretcher, and we feel the need to have people come alongside us and ease our burden, what I like to call stretcher bearers. And so we need friends who are willing to bear one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ, as Paul wrote. People with imagination to turn their faith into good use so that those occurring or having problems and challenges could be helped in a very concrete way. So think about what these men had to do. They had to figure out a way to carry Jesus, or excuse me, carry this uh, friend of theirs over to the house where Jesus was preaching. And then verse 4 tells us that when they got there, the house was full. So there was no way into the home. But that didn't stop them. They were creative. And you and I are creative because we've been made in the image of God. And so what do they do? They, maybe they take their belts off, but they, they tie ropes there. They move up to the top of the roof. They remove the tiles, Luke tells us in his account. And they lower him down, and there he is, right in front of the feet of Jesus. And it says, and this is to me one of the most amazing verses in all of Scripture, uh, in verse 5, that when Jesus saw their faith, he said to the paralytic, Son, your sins are forgiven. There's power in the faith of Christian friends. Whose faith did Jesus respond to here? The paralytics? No, not exactly. It was the faith of his friends. Yes, Jesus did the healing, but the thing that prompted the miracle 
was the four people bringing their friend in faith to the feet of Jesus. And so there's tremendous power when Christians exercise their faith and encourage and support each other in the name of Jesus. I want to encourage you to think about those who are going through this difficult time, who are on a stretcher. Maybe they're living alone. Maybe they're feeling isolated. Maybe life is already difficult for them. Maybe they've had ongoing physical or other concerns that now are just made that much worse. Maybe people who just need a word of encouragement. Who can you reach out to today? I would just ask you to pray, Lord, what's mine to do? Who would you place on my heart, Lord, that I can reach out to you and encourage them? Is there a cost when we reach out to those who are on a stretcher? Absolutely. It takes time. It takes effort. Maybe it takes some money. We can't get around that. For the friends in our text, it meant carrying the friend to Jesus, getting him up on the roof, making a hole, lowering him down. It requires your personal involvement, and it may call for some creativity or perseverance, as in the case of the four friends. But you see, it was only after their creative efforts and their determination that they were able to see the results. Can you imagine how they felt when they left the room after seeing their friend literally walk out? Doesn't it make you want to have been there? It was worth the effort. And that's why Jesus taught us it's more blessed to give than to receive. To be in Christ is to be in ministry, no matter where you're living, no matter what your circumstances. And the good news is you can start today. There's probably someone right now who could use a phone call or a virtual visit from you or a drive-by, drop off some flowers or some cookies or something, or a note just to say, I'm aware of what you're going through. I love you. I'm praying for you. And we encourage them to be pointed towards Jesus Christ. He's the one that'll deal with the main issues. He's the one who healed the man in the end. But we're called to come alongside and just do those practical secondary things to help nudge people into the presence of Christ. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you that you give us work to do for your kingdom. We thank you for the friends that you've given us who can come alongside us when we're struggling. And thank you for calling us to be a friend to those who are in need, just like the friends did for their paralytic friend. We pray, Lord, that you would call to mind those who we need to be reaching out to right now who are going through some hard times, that we can be God with skin on to them as we reach out and initiate caring for them just as you've cared for us. You've told us this is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us and we are to lay down our lives for one another. Help us to step out in faith and do just that, that the glory may go to you in your name. Amen.